Good morning, Heidi Regent, Connections President, coming with you from the Tokyo American Club Children's Library. And I want to read with you today one of my absolute favorite authors, Patricia Polacco. She has written many, many books, and I love every single one of them. But this is one of my favorites as we look out the skies today, and it's a little bit rainy and a little bit stormy. The book is being read courtesy of Scholastic, and the title of the book is Thunder Cake. On sultry summer days at my grandmother's farm in Michigan, the air gets damp and heavy. Storm clouds drift low over the fields. Birds fly close to the ground. The clouds glow for an instant with a sharp, crackling light. And then a roaring, low, tumbling sound of thunder makes the window shudder in their panes. The sound used to scare me when I was little. I loved to go to Grandma's house. Babushka, as I used to call my grandma, had come from Russia years before. But I feared Michigan summer storms. I feared the sound of thunder more than anything. I always hid under the bed when the storm moved near the farmhouse. This is the story of how my grandma, my babushka, helped me overcome my fear of thunderstorms. Grandma looked at the horizon, drew a deep breath and said, this is thunder cake. Baking weather, all right. It looks like a storm coming to me. Child, you come out from under that bed. It's only thunder you're hearing, my grandma said. The air was so hot, heavy, and damp. A loud clap of thunder shook the house, rattled the windows, and made me grab her close. Steady, child, she cooed. Unless you let go of me, we won't be able to make a thunder cake today. Thunder cake, I stammered, as I hugged her even closer. Don't pay attention to that old thunder, except to see how close the storm is getting. When you see the lightning, start counting, real slow. When you hear the thunder, stop counting. That number is how many miles away the storm is. Understand, she asked. We need to know how far away the storm is, so we have time to make the cake and get it into the oven before the storm comes, or it won't be a real thunder cake. Her eyes surveyed the dark clouds away off in the distance. Then she strode into the kitchen. Her worn hands pulled a thick book from the shelf above the wood stove. Let's find that recipe, child, she crowed as she lovingly fingered the grease-stained pages to a creased spot. Here it is, thunder cake. She carefully penned the ingredients on a piece of notepaper. Now let's gather all the things we'll need, she exclaimed as she scurried toward the back door. We were by the barn door when a huge bolt of lightning flashed. I started counting like Grandma told me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then the thunder roared. Ten miles. It's ten miles away, Grandma said as she looked at the sky. About an hour away, I'd say. You'll have to hurry, child. Gather them eggs, careful like, she said. Eggs from mean old Nellie Peck Hen? I was scared. I knew she would try to peck me. I'm here. She won't hurt you. Just get them eggs, Grandma said softly. The lightning flashed again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I counted. Nine miles, Grandma reminded me. Milk was next. Milk from old Kick Cow. As Grandma milked her, Kit Cow turned and looked mean right at me. I was scared. She looked so big. Zip went the lightning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I counted. Broom went the thunder. Eight miles, child, Grandma croaked. Now we have to get chocolate and sugar and flour from the dry shed. I was scared as we walked down the path from the farmhouse through Tangleweed Woods to the dry shed. Suddenly, the lightning slit the sky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I counted. Boom! 
Boom! cried the thunder. It scared me a lot, but I kept walking with Grandma. Another jagged edge of lightning flashed as I crept into the dry shed. One, two, three, four, five, six, I counted. Crackle, crackle, boom, kaboom, the thunder bellowed. It was dark and I was scared. I'm here, child, Grandma said softly from the doorway. Hurry now, we haven't got much time. We've got everything but the secret ingredient. Three overripe tomatoes and some strawberries, Grandma whispered as she squinted at the list. I climbed up high on the trellis. The ground looked a long way down. I was scared. I'm here, child, she said. Her voice was steady and soft. You won't fall. I reached three luscious tomatoes while she picked strawberries. Lightning again. One, two, three, four, five, I counted. Kabang! Broom! The thunder growled. We hurried back to the house and the warm kitchen and we measured the ingredients. I poured them into the mixing bowl while Grandma mixed. I churned butter for the frosting and melted chocolate. Finally, we poured the batter into the cake pans and put them into the oven together. Lightning lit the kitchen. I only counted to three and the thunder rumbled and crashed. Three miles away, Grandma said, and the cake is in the oven. We made it. We have a real thunder cake. As we waited for the cake, Grandma looked out the window for a long time. Why, you aren't afraid of thunder? You're too brave, she said as she looked right at me. I'm not brave, Grandma, I said. I was under the bed, remember? But you got out from under it, she answered. And you got eggs from mean old Nellie Peckhen. You got milk from old Kit Cow. You went through Tanglewood Woods to the dry shed. You climbed the trellis in the barnyard. From where I sit, only a brave person could have done all of them things. I thought and I thought as the storm rumbled closer. She was right. I was brave. Brave people can't be afraid of sound, child, she said. As we spread out the tablecloth and set the table, when we were done, we hurried into the kitchen to take the cake out of the oven. After the cake had cooled, we frosted it. Just then the lightning flashed and this time it lit up the whole sky. Even before the last flash had faded, the thunder rolled, boomed, crashed, and broomed just above us. The storm was here. Perfect, Grandma cooed just perfect. She beamed as she added the last strawberry to the glistening chocolate frosting on top of our thunder cake. As rain poured down on our roof, Grandma cut a wedge for each of us. She poured us steaming cups of tea from the samovar. When the thunder roared above us so hard it shook the windows and rattled the dishes in the cupboards, we just smiled and ate our thunder cake. From that time on, I never feared the voice of thunder again. And on the last page is the recipe for grandma's thunder cake that you can make at home. I know we're doing a lot more cooking at home and I'm sure that you're being very brave during this time too.